from the Ryan Desk Foundation. We're just one of the many organisations and individuals involved in natural flood management, helping to slow the flow in Herefordshire. But what does slow the flow mean? What are we trying to slow the flow of? Well, there's a bit of a clue behind me. Water, and more specifically, the water in our rivers in Herefordshire. The water in our rivers is incredibly important. We use it every day in so many ways. We need it to grow crops for the food we eat, to drink it, to clean ourselves and our clothes, to flush our toilets. We need it for industries and factories which make the things we use every day. You get the idea, it's pretty important. And one small matter, we simply can't survive without clean water and neither can the many different animal species who live in and around our rivers. Marvellous mammals like otters and water voles, fantastic fish such as salmon and trout, incredible invertebrates including mayfly nymphs, caddisflies and leeches, beautiful birds such as kingfishers, heron and dippers. All of these important and special species live in and around our rivers and each has their own specific adaptation to help them survive in this riparian, that's just a fancy word for river, but to survive in this riparian habitat. And they depend on the river well for everything. So I think we can agree, rivers and the clean water in them are essential, vital for people and wildlife and well, great in lots of other ways too. Until Sometimes there's just too much water and we end up with flooding. Water is powerful and flooding can cause huge amounts of damage and massive problems for people when their homes and businesses are flooded. For farmers too, who can lose their soil, crops and livestock, its impacts on people can be devastating and unfortunately we've seen a lot of flooding in our county. Flooding can also be catastrophic for wild animal species living in and near the rivers because whilst if we have to, we can evacuate and move away from floods, they can't. It's easy to think if animals live in and near water, then maybe they won't be affected by too much of it, but many are. Fish eggs and invertebrates are simply washed out and away by the force of the water. Other species are affected in ways you might not think of. For kingfishers and otters, flooding means their homes, their nests and halts are submerged. When soil is washed into the rivers during flooding, it causes problems for invertebrates and the fish, so everything in the river food chain is affected. And flooding is not only bad for wildlife in the rivers, other kinds of habitats can be damaged too. We're used to seeing some areas underwater for so much longer now, so we just see the tops of hedges poking out. And when that happens, there are no places for birds like yellowhammers to nest. And if meadows are inundated underwater for too long, that impacts on flower species such as snakes head fritillary and ground nesting birds like skylarks. All of these are reasons why we're trying to slow the flow of rainwater into our rivers in Herefordshire. To work out how we can slow the flow, we need to understand why and how flooding happens. To discover this, we need to look at the source of the water. Here at the top of our river catchment area, our rivers start as small streams or watercourses up on high ground, just like this spot in the mountains. From this higher land, at the top of the catchment area, they travel down to flatter ground, growing bigger and wider as they're joined by tributaries on their way to the sea. The catchment area is the area where water is collected by the landscape naturally. You could think of it like this. If you cup your hands together when it's raining and collect water in them, your hands have become a catchment, with the outside edge of the catchment always being the highest point, so the hills and mountains. This map shows you the catchment areas for some of our rivers and brooks in Herefordshire. When it rains on the high ground at the top of the catchment, the rainwater is either absorbed into the ground 
or forms watercourses feeding into rivers and streams. If it continues to rain, the ground becomes saturated. It simply can't hold any more water, like a sponge that is completely soaked. So more water runs off the land and into the streams and rivers. This extra water in the rivers makes them fuller. The levels of the rivers rise and it makes them run or flow faster too. If yet more rain continues to fall, the river channels just can't hold all the extra water. So the banks break or are overwhelmed and we end up with flooding. We need to do something or some things to change that so that every time we have heavy rain up here, we don't end up with flooding affecting everyone, including our precious wildlife further downstream. But how? We certainly can't stop it from raining and we're getting more rain these days. What we can do is to slow the flow of the rainwater into our watercourses and rivers. And what's really great is that nature is ready to help us and work with us to slow the flow. When we do this, work with nature to influence or manage what happens to the rainwater when it falls to help reduce floods and flooding, we call it natural flood management. So let's see how people are working with each other and with nature in Herefordshire to slow the flow. One really successful and simple technique being used to slow the flow is tree planting. And it's pretty cool as the trees help by acting like nature's flood umbrellas. Think about it. If you stand under a tree, under its canopy of leaves, it's kind of like being under a big green umbrella, isn't it? Umbrellas don't stop the rain from falling, but they do stop it from hitting us. Trees act just like umbrellas when it rains. Their branches and leaves act as physical barriers to the rain. They actually start to slow the flow of water straight away by slowing down the rate at which water hits the ground. Even more incredibly, they reduce the amount of rain which goes into the soil, as some water will actually stay on the leaves and evaporate from them, rather than going into the ground at all. Pretty clever, eh? And, as if all that wasn't amazing enough, with the trees working so hard for us, well, there's more. Trees also help slow the flow by acting as sponges. Their roots take up water, which travels to other parts of the trees, so water is stored in the trees. Trees are sponges as well as umbrellas. When it comes to natural flood management though, trees aren't the only things that act like sponges. When rain hits the ground, some of it is absorbed by the soil. So the soil acts like a sponge too, soaking up the water. But, as ever, the trees get in on this too, as their roots help the soil to act as a better sponge so it can absorb, hold more water. So spongy, so clever. And one last thing about trees, well for now, their roots actually help to hold the soil in place so that it doesn't get washed away when we have heavy rain. Those trees, what can I say? They're just tremendous. So now we know the theory, how about a little experiment to see if trees really do act as umbrellas and sponges? Let's go to my very mm, low-tech lab, mm, my garden table. Let's go and do an experiment.
We know flooding affects us all and can be catastrophic, but natural flood management techniques like tree planting can and do work to slow the flow of water into our rivers and reduce flooding. I hope you've enjoyed this first session on natural flood management and that thinking about trees as acting like umbrellas and sponges is a useful way to remember how this technique works in slowing the flow. In our next video, we'll be looking at other ways we can help to slow the flow using different techniques like, mm, no, you're gonna have to wait and see. Ah, the power. So until then, stay safe and see you soon.